And that's how things all goes. Welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. If you didn't know, this is a premiere podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Very embarrassing. The remote was, my TV remote was sitting next to me on the, on the bed and I, <laughs> on my, I mean, on the futon and I threw it at my bed thinking that it would make it to it. Thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening. Galileo. Um, but it bounced off. Stupid joke. Bounced off and landed right on the hardwood floor. See here at uh, WBED, we have hardwood floors. Oh, let me explain WBED. So we've got <laughs> we've got uh, an issue over here. So I've been applying to jobs all over the place. You get that. You know that. You understand it. You love it because <laughs> you don't want me dog walking and moving for the rest of my life, uh, especially after I have a degree I spent time on. God, these there are gnats all over the place, and I, I hate it so much. Uh, so I, so I started, so I applied to a position. I've been, I've been applying to, if you see me swat, if you're watching the video and you see me swat, there's a gnat around me. So I've been applying to W A B E, uh, which is my, which is Atlanta's local NPR station. I've been applying there for the past, you know, since I graduated from college for the past couple of years since I graduated from college. And I've been trying to get a job there as a producer, reporter, literally, literally anything. I can't be an intern because I'm too old for that and I don't have, I can't get credits and I'm too young to, 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 to get a beat somewhere else, you know, at any other place, you know, except for when I was at NBC and, you know, I, I had that credibility there, but now I don't, I have nothing. So, so I can't, I can't really, I can't really, it's, it's, it's tough getting a job. You know, they want you to have experience. You can't get experience because nobody wants to hire you. Not even the, the least watched news station in Atlanta, which is CBS uh, 46. <laughs> no offense to them. If you want to hire me, hire me. I will, I'm gladly willing to work. Their offices are right in Midtown. <laughs> I know where they are. I've been there. I've been to the Fox. I've been at SB. I've been, I know where everybody is. <laughs> so I've been applying to WABE and uh, recently there was a job that just opened up that was a odd ca- a potty, odd cast, audio slash podcast producer position there. And so I think I mentioned this last week, but I applied to it. And uh, I think that I, I think I'm the best, you know, I think I'm the best person suited for the job because I listen to a lot of podcasts. I do the research. I know the work. I do all this stuff. So uh, one day last week when I was applying, well, I applied for the job. And then I said, and then I, like a day later, I said, well, how did they, like, I, I made a reel. They, they, they asked for a reel, uh, which was, give us a demo of how your, have, how your work would sound or look or whatever. So I did that. I wrote a, essentially a nine-minute episode of a podcast called The Application, and I said, here's, here's how it will sound, and I did, like, an ad, I did a fake ad read up top. Uh, and then I did, I had a, a fake uh, station, which was WBED, which I just used now. And I had, which I introduced this episode with. And then I just read a script, essentially. And then I thought, well, maybe, maybe they can't, like the, like the next day, I, was like, I thought maybe, maybe they, maybe it'd be funnier if uh, I just did this as a daily thing. Cause it just kind of went from one thing to a daily thing. Uh, because they, because WABE has an issue where they're not responding to my freaking emails and they're not responding to my phone calls. And all you got to do is just respond. It's easy. Just say, hey, Chad, we got your stuff. Okay. So that's all, that's all I need from them. And so I've been doing this daily podcast for the past seven days called The Application. You can subscribe to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, any podcast player that you love. Subscribe to it right now because there and there's, it's a, it's gaining a, a few subscribers. It's gaining more subscribers than the Constitutionals has, which is very strange to me. Anybody wants to listen to my struggles with this uh, applying to this job? So, so I started. So then I started. I started making these podcasts more and more. And then I email them. I email the podcast out to WABE's HR department, and I mention the guy who's in charge of HR. His name is Kenneth Brown. I I, I listen, buddy. You gotta hire me. All right, I'm looking at you right now. I'm looking at you right now, because just in case I decide to edit in a weird direction, and so so then I started just making the podcast, uh, and now we're seven. Now we're seven in. I just did. I literally just finished episode seven, and now I'm jumping right into the constitutionals, which is not a good idea because my I'm very thirsty and tired. My throat hurts, and it's raining outside, and I want to lay down. I want to eat a bowl of cereal. I want to. Uh, I will, I'll get into this later, but Binding of Isaac is on sale on Nintendo Switch, and I bought it. I spent no. I spent the money I did not have. I bought the game. And I love it so much. Um, But yeah, so now I'm seven episodes in. Uh, You can listen to it right now. Episode one is very scripted. There are little to no jokes. 
And then in episode two, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I should tell, I should, episode two was maybe I should give them a little taste of, of how I would do a, like a, do a podcast. Like I would do like a real one, not write a script or anything. So I did episode two. I sat down and I, I picked three stories and I talked about them. And then I thought eh, that one wasn't that good. So then I, on uh, the third one, Chad lives matter. I, I don't know what I did. Oh, I gave them uh, ideas or something like that. Oh no, no. Episode four was the idea episode, which is what it's called. So I gave them ideas and then episode five, episode three was me just rambling. Episode four, another ramble, five, and it just and and basically it just turned into the constitutionals, but it's really, really loaded constitutionals wherein I I'm I have one topic and I talk about it and I need I need them to hire me because I'm good at covering this stuff. So like I just said, I just put out episode seven. It's called Donate for What, <laughs> in which I discuss that. Uh, there's a Patreon model for people for people who are independent and making money that way, like the Doughboys or Talking Simpsons. You can donate money, and then you get like free episodes of shows, early access, all that stuff. And then uh, Stitcher Premium, uh, which is Earwolf's thing, they give you uh, the backlog of shows, five dollars a month. They give you the backlog of shows. They give you access, early access to premium shows, all that stuff, five dollars a month. I thought. Hey, NPR, uh, WABE and NPR, they always have these monthly pledge drives. If you don't know your local NPR station, they always do these pledge drives uh, in which you can donate money and you get you donate $120, you get a free T-shirt or a free uh, subscription in New York Times or a free mug, you know, stuff like that. You've seen it on PBS all the time. And so I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if you donate you you all you get the free shirt, but then you also with that you get access you get early access to the show that I create because I gave them I gave them ideas I gave them uh, about eight ideas uh, ten ten ideas ten ideas for mini series and for regular weekly series and so wouldn't it be great if you could get early access to these things wouldn't it be wonderful to say hey. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a podcast chronicling the rise of music talents in Atlanta. And, and I really, and the show sounds interesting. It's coming out in November, but if we donate $120 now, we can get, uh, the access of first three episodes for free right now. I mean, you know, for the donation, whatever. So donate $120, you get the shirt, you get the RSS feed with the early access and then boom. Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be great to have? That'd be something interesting to have in Arsenal. And no other NPR station is doing it. And I can produce a podcast in a quick fashion. You can see you're seeing this right now. <laughs> you're seeing the constitutionals the day it comes the day it comes out, the day it's shot. So anyway, uh, check it out. I've been tweeting it at them. It's literally the only thing I check Twitter for. I'm tweeting it at them. I'm tagging them. <laughs> I'm emailing them. I'm calling them. As soon as I get done with this, I'm going to call them and say, hey, uh, can you send me over to uh, Kenneth Brown's email? I mean, uh, uh, phone. <laughs> and I know they see it because no one else is tweeting at WABE. Their tweets don't get the retweets. They don't get the likes <laughs> that every other news organization, you know, for instance, WSB gets. And WSB doesn't get that many. But CNN gets, you know, something like that. So they're not getting that much. And so I guarantee, and I, and I know they only, only have like 100, 200 people that work there. So someone is seeing it. <laughs> I would forward it to the right people, <laughs> especially if a, one person is putting in this much effort to get hired to to stop doing anything. Because I would love to stop dog walking. I would love to stop moving because I hate both of those things. I hate them so much. Oh my gosh, it never rains. It never rains when I need it to, <laughs> so I could just sit, <laughs> sit and watch the dog inside. <laughs> you know, listen to a podcast. Oh my gosh! So what are we talking about this time? <laughs> I spent too much time on the uh, on this uh, new stuff. So this past weekend, I did have a I had a move uh, back where I used to live, uh, up and up up in up in the suburbs, and uh, and in between I had two moves. So in between both those moves, I I go I went to see a movie. You know, six dollars went to, went to my old stomping grounds <laughs> saw a movie. Six dollars, wonderful. I saw the Predator. I had a really good time. A lot of issues with that film. A lot of issues that I think it's, which is, a, it might be a Shane Black problem, <laughs> but I, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Sterling K. Brown was very menacing. It, it was, it was a very campy movie. It was very uh, funny. It was very, I loved it a lot. The entire cast is great. 
too many people everyone dies which is it's just not a spoiler i mean it's like just like an alien movie just like the prior the movies everyone dies um jacob Tremblay was great a uh, boyd holbrook might be a little bit overacting olivia munn was wonderful even though she was the only woman besides uh besides boyd holbrook's wife <laughs> uh every, but, but it was really fun at a good time there there are moments where i think the the editor had too much fun just editing the movie <laughs> where it just kind of skipped around everything but I, but overall fantastic really 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 wonderful uh also i started watching i talked about forever last week the fred armison my rudolph show on, on amazon prime and at that point i'd only watched the pilot the premiere and this is very interesting and if you're not going to watch a show then or if you are going to watch a show I skip ahead about 30 seconds uh, Fred Armisen dies in the pilot and then in the second episode it's been a year and Maya Rudolph is alone and then she dies at the end of that episode and then she wakes up and episode three is oh hey we're dead and now we're in purgatory and now we're just living our lives out as as uh, angels or ghosts or whatever and they don't give it a name and it is so and it's it's that's a very interesting twist uh, Alan Yang and Matt Hubbard did such a wonderful job conveying. It might be, I listened to the Pop Culture Happy Hour episode that came out the previous week talking about Forever, and they said, if you haven't watched the rest of the episodes, just don't, don't listen to the episode. But so, and they, so that's why, they, you know, they die in these first two episodes, which is amazing. I think it's a really good twist. Uh, the Pop Culture Happy Hour team, some of them thought, a couple of them thought it was boring, boring show. Yeah, I mean, that's what, it comes with the territory. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a droll show about trying to cope with how we're going to be together forever, <laughs> you know, for literally for eternity. It's a really, it was a, I had a good time with it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good show. And I, and it's a one-off series and you know, Amazon did it again. <laughs> did, they did it again. I just finished Sneaky Pete season two, three, two, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I thought that was a really good show too. Anyway, so let's, let's move on. Uh, Ego Nuotum is a, an improviser. And you would you'd only know her if you listen to podcasts and if you live on the West Coast and you've seen her perform. But she was a she was an NBA, US Jesus UCB performer, and now she is going to be on SNL, and I'm very excited for her. She's a wonderful talent that deserves the moon. She was uh, she's very funny. She was on Comedy Bang Bang a whole bunch. She's been on the Teachers Lounge podcast, which I urge you to listen to both. Uh, all of her appearances on both shows. She's so funny. She has, I don't want to say she has no filter because it is just, that's the most archaic way of describing somebody. But she can just, she can jump to any point in any comedy routine uh, and make it, and make it, and make it outlandish, make it funny. She's got these accents that are great. But uh, Ego, she's wonderful. I've been listening to her for years and I still don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right, but I know it's New Odom. So there you go. She's also joined by Alan Linick, Allison Gates, Eli Mandel, and Bowen Yang. Those four are writers, but Ego's going to be a featured player. So that's wonderful. I'm glad for her. Speaking of which, uh, you know, she's joining you know, the, the likes of, you know, Alex Moffat and Mike, Mikey Day and uh, Melissa Villasenor. They, they got uh, bumps. They, they became uh, repertory players. And then... You know, Chris Redd and Heidi Gardner are still featured players, which is great. That's such a they have such a good crew of SNL people right now. And, you know, it's every every generation's different. I love it. And speaking of SNL, Kenan Thompson is going to be uh, starring in a show. It's got a it's got an NBC commitment. It's a single dad comedy from Lauren Michaels and the Superstore EP, which is Jackie Clark. And it's called Saving Larry, single camera show. And do, 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 let's see, Deadline. Okay, well, Tom, okay, well, Thompson did tell Deadline that he'd happily stay on SNL forever. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but if Saving Larry goes a series, that would be kind of difficult to to manage both of those SNL and Saving Larry because the only time they have off really is like winter and a couple of weeks in spring. And summer, of course, obviously. But the show is, it's about uh, a dad who, after his wife dies, has to be both mother and mother and father to his kids. And he has to do it 
all with his father-in-law hovering over him. Uh, Thompson is the longest running SNL cast member with 15 seasons under his belt. Yep. Oh my God. And they wrote, the, they said the same words that I just wrote. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. They wrote the same words that I said. I didn't even, I honestly, I did not look at that, but yeah, he's a uh, 15 years. This coming season will be 15 or yeah. Next, next season will be 16. It's going to be great. Uh, Keenan's really funny. And I would, you know, there's a bunch of, a bunch of people have done projects in between, you know, SNL, Brigsby Bear, Kyle Mooney made that movie. Uh, Kate McKinnon's been in a bunch of movies, Cecily Strong as well. Uh, everybody does something in between SNL. A.D. Bryant is going to be on a TV show on Hulu that's coming out in the, with, in the coming months. Uh, but who knows? Maybe this is going to, you know, NBC, they, NB, all broadcast networks have started doing short order shows more like much like um, cable shows and streaming shows, they realize they don't have to order 22 or 24 uh, for ABC and ABC's case is 24. I believe blackish does 24 episodes. Same thing with modern family, same thing with, you know, the middle and the rest of them. I don't, I think the Goldbergs too, but I don't think speechless and fresh off the boat, which have been moved to Fridays, which sucks. Nobody's going to watch it except for me, but I really, I wish him the best of luck. Kenan's going to do great. I, and I'll, honestly, if he wants to stay at SNL for the rest of his life, do it. Not for the rest of his life, but, uh, but if he wants to continue working at SNL, then do it. I hope he can do it. I want him to make it to 20 years. That'd be so great. And no one could Trump uh, to, can beat his numbers. And then uh, moving on, Apple uh, has said that they are not going to, they're, they're going to have a, if you don't know, Apple's going to have a TV show, TV network. Oh, jeez. Not a TV network. Uh, the my my headphones came out. That's why I said, "Oh, geez, they're not gonna have a, a TV network, but they are gonna have a bunch of TV shows coming, coming soon to an Apple near you." They don't have the streaming service. They don't have. We don't know how they're gonna do it, but they're gonna do it somehow. So they're gonna have all of these shows coming to you, and most importantly, they don't want sex or violence as part of the upcoming shows. This is from the Wall Street Journal via IGN. Tim Cook. It's reportedly saying no to shows that feature graphic depictions of sex and violence for the tech company's upcoming digital streaming slate, which I think is very so stupid. So this really came to light when a show called Vital Signs from Dr. Dre and uh, Jimmy Iovine, which is a show about Dre's life. It was was going to be a half hour dark drama. Oh, wow. Cool. It's going to be loosely based on Dre's life. And then and but it also but the show also featured uh, cocaine and 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 sex and and like, you know, guns and stuff. And this is what this is what, uh, according to Wall Street Journal, uh, Cook told Iovine that vital signs was simply too violent, quote unquote, too violent. The. (laughs) Wall Street Journal continues and says, uh, Apple, quote, wants high quality shows with stars and broad appeal, but it doesn't want gratuitous sex with any of violence. So they they have two of the the biggest, you know, music producers in the world wanting to make a show on for whatever streaming service or whatever the hell they're going to put out. I'm not that's not a curse word. I can say hell. <laughs> but for whatever the hell they want to put out. And because this is a clean show and <laughs> they want to do that. But then they also want, no, we just, it, it has, everything has to be PG, maybe PG 13. Cause it said gratuitous sex. You can't have gratuitous sex, which is how are you, how are you going to fight by, by limiting everything? How are you going to, how are you going to, how are you going to fight in the same arena as Hulu, as Amazon, as Netflix, as HBO? How are you going to put out the same quality things? And it's, but it's all going to be, you know, below below age dribble who knows i think it's that's a very that's a very strange thing to want to do i get that he that they want it to be accessible to all and also i I think the issue is i think that they want it to it's going to be in some type of app that's going to be only on the phones because right now you can only if you want to watch the carpool karaoke show it's only available on apple products and I can't even, I wouldn't even guess the numbers. For I can't even guess the ratings. How many people are actually watching that show? And I see the breakouts. You know, I subscribe to the James Corden uh, Late Late Show YouTube channel. And I see the breakouts. And I couldn't, I can't, and, and they, they, you know, they only, they're only like two minutes long. But, you know, you have Mazzy Williams and some other Game of Thrones stars. And it, it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand. If how are you going to make money? If I were them, 
I what I would have done is I I know they don't I know they want to make all the money for themselves, uh, but I would have teamed up. I would produce the shows. I would just make a production company. I would just produce the shows, and then I would you know I would offer them to the other streaming outlets because no one's gonna pay for more streaming. You know, Netflix is the is a tippy top. You know. I just, I just upped, I had for the past week, I've had, uh, for the Emmys, I got Hulu with live TV. So I was watching, you know, live TV again. Cause now, now like I missed, I miss having access to all those channels. And, and so I had Hulu with live TV and I was just, I was watching all this stuff for the past week that I just miss, you know, Cartoon Network Live, Adult Swim, just a whole bunch of things. Uh, HGTV. Of course I can watch these things on Hulu regular, Hulu proper, but it's just not the same. Not watch, like not putting it on the background and just sitting there vegging out and watching something. And so, uh, but then, but then at some point, I was watching. I was watching Conan episodes, like Conan episodes from the night before. And TBS on demand would give me commercials that were were like full length commercials. They'd be like four minutes long. <laughs> And then I was, and I was like, no, I, I can't handle this right now. You like, I pay the $8 for the regular, for the base, base, base Hulu thing. But then uh, I was like, you know, I'll just up it to the commercial free. Turns out it only, the TBS on demand still has the commercials on the commercial free, no matter who you're paying for, <laughs> which really pissed me off. But you know, it's whatever, it's fine. But now, but now I'm paying the, I pay the $12 for Hulu with no commercials. And then Amazon is uh, $13, 12 $13 a month. And then Netflix is $12, $13 a month. But we still have access to all this stuff. And nobody wants, and what I'm saying is nobody wants to have another streaming service. Another, you know, you have the music. You've got three streaming uh, show things right there. Then there's other, there's other streaming networks. You've got CBS All Access. Uh, you've got Verve, which is like a bunch of online stuff. If you don't pay for if you if you if you want YouTube Red or YouTube Premium for some reason they change the name if you want YouTube Premium for some reason and you don't want Google Play Music even though they they come with it you have to pay the twelve dollars. Gosh, there's that imp, there's that show Impulse on YouTube Premium that I would I would like to watch. It's uh, based on Jumper and apparently it's pretty decent is what I've read and I just want I want I really want to check it out. There's there's I've watched a couple of things uh, on YouTube Premium like. Um, do you want to see a dead body and the Cobra Kai show, of course, which I spoke about. But speaking of, did I mention video games at any point? Anyway, uh, let's move on to our final story. Telltale, the gaming company, closed down abruptly and fired a whole bunch of people, which was like a lot of its a lot of its uh, staff. 200, 200 people were let go. Two hundred people. Telltale Games, which which created the Walking Dead video game, I think in two thousand in, in the early two thousands, in, in the last the last decade, in the last decade they created that, and then they they blew up after that. Then they have uh, Walking Dead season two. Now they're on Walking Dead season three, which is not going to get finished so far. Uh, then they have the Wolf Among Us, the Batman game, the Guardians of the Galaxy game, the Borderlands game. They have all of these all these storytelling games. Storytelling, story-driven games, and then and the Game of Thrones one, and then they just abruptly dead, just dead, and they and they didn't give people severance, which is the real kicker. Which and it's all so strange that it just to me and the Minecraft game, and it just seems like they ran out of money. And then they had they were working with uh, Netflix to make a Stranger Things game, and that's I mean Netflix is still interested in doing that, but not with Telltale, with somebody else. And it's so so odd that that they would just do this. Like one employee told Kotaku that that person had been working until 3 a.m. the night previous, like before everything happened. So now there's so now there's only, so they cut 200 people, over 200 people, and now there's only 25 people left to finish the final uh, project, which is Minecraft Story Mode, which is, I think, in its, in its second or third year or something like that. And then after they were fired, after these people were fired, after these people were let go, they were encouraged to apply for unemployment ASAP, and uh, the benefits are running out at the end of the month, so which is in a couple of days from this posting, and they had 30 minutes to leave the building. Imagine, imagine saying, oh, like imagine it being like 11 a.m., and you're at work, and then, every, and then somebody comes in and says, hey, uh, you guys, sorry, we got we to gotta let you go. Uh, get out now and all and and just go it's 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 
and the the lack of severance uh, is is the is the big is the big detail, the big kicker that people are just so angry about. And also, Walking Dead uh, season three was it just came out yesterday. It's baffling. It's baffling how this would happen. Um, I want to read this from Kotaku. The rationale for failing to put uh, to pay out severance provided by Holly, according to Kotaku no, source, was that uh, this was a business closure rather than partial layoffs, like the twenty five percent downsizing that hit the studio last November. They've been having issues. They've been losing people uh, or having to cut people off, you know, left and right. And the, they work in California, obviously the studios in California. So uh, Californians are the businesses by California law are required employee requires employees to provide 60 days notice from mass layoffs. And, uh, but there are some exceptions that, you know, basically might have applied to telltale. That is, that is just crazy. And people worked hours, 50 hour weeks, 70, 80 is what I'm reading in a quote. And weekends were often expected. Oh my gosh. That's from Emily Grace Buck, a lead designer on several telltale games. Oh, that is just so sad. That sucks so much to have all these people being out of a job to to one day on a Tuesday waking up and saying your job is done or no, not even a Tuesday. It was over the weekend. It was like a Friday or Thursday or Friday. And they said, your job is done. Like, get out. That is that is insane. And no one at Telltale is speaking, you know, so far. Uh, and I'm, su- I'm sure as, as soon as I, I close out this podcast, someone's going to say something. But that's still, that's just so, I, I urge you to read about, read about it and just pester, pester uh, walking uh, Telltale. And apparently Telltale is talking to other companies to finish the, the last season of the Walking Dead video game in some form. So, you know, it could be a comic book. They could episode two just came out and they're finishing Minecraft story mode right now. And uh, that's it. And, then, you know, it could be it was supposed to be four episodes, but it could be a comic book. Uh, they have the Batman, the enemy within supposed to come out. This is see, this is the issue that I ran into uh, a couple of years ago when it was announced that they had like seven projects in development. And I think it was at an E3. They had seven projects in development. And I went, oh, that's too much for that studio because it takes them already three months to put out an episode of uh that's of an ongoing series like though i remember walking dead season two it was it was at least three or four months between episodes and it took it took so long to put out episodes so i, I don't understand i get saying hey everybody's interested let's 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 start let's start let's start making these episodes let's start making these games but it it just you know, you're you're spread too thin. You know you're a small studio. Your engine, your game engine sucks. Like playing a playing a game should be easy. And it should and especially a story driven game like that where you're just making decisions and you're not really doing there's not much action or anything. It shouldn't jitter. And every single time from the Walking Dead season one to Wolf Among Us to Minecraft to Tales of the Tales from the Borderland. Uh, to to Batman Enemy Within, which I only played the first episode of, there every single cutscene, every single moment it was a jitter. It was a jitter in the movement of every character, and it was not cute. And it and it doesn't make and it baffles me. What they should have done is, you know, they 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 jumped on making a, a Game of Thrones game. They jumped on making a Netflix Stranger Things game. They should have taken that money and said, okay, we're gonna do, you know, cut down the seasons. Uh, instead of releasing five episodes for every game, you know, release, you know, two or three, try to tell a story, uh, try to tell a, instead of trying to tell a 10 hour story, try to tell a five hour story, uh, and, and, and just let it be like that. Cause a lot of the times their stories did drag on, uh, and, and, and take that money and take some of that money and build it towards making a more, uh, more stable engine so that games can run on. It just doesn't make sense. And then they, and then they, and, they and, and I, what I assume the reason is they never changed the, the engine is because that engine can run on literally any, any device. It can run on uh, my, my Pixel 2 XL. It can run on my Nintendo Switch. It can run on my PS4, my Xbox One. It could run on my Nexus uh, 6P that is sitting in a drawer that's been turned off. It can run on my laptop. It can run on all this stuff. And I think that's the reason why they just like, it's an easy, an easy thing to port. 
It's easier than, you know, going with Unreal and letting and, and you know, trying to work it like that. It just does it just baffles me how a company can be so so egregious with the way it just wants to accept money. So here's an update. A class action lawsuit has been filed uh, by by one ex employee. He's doing it on the behalf of uh, everybody he works with. Uh, here, here's what here's what it reads. This is an update from the 25th, so yesterday. The complaint, no, the complaint. Jesus, the complaint alleges that Telltale Games violated the state and federal Warren Acts by failing to provide 275 workers who were laid off from the studio last Friday with the 60 days notice required by law. The complaint is seeking a judgment from the court that Telltale pay off all pay all of the laid off employees, the wages, salaries, 401k contributions and any other money they would have normally earned during those 60 days. Oh, my gosh. Uh, here's the here's the final thing in this article. The Warren Act includes several exceptions, including certain instances in which a company is seeking to acquire a new business or capital that will allow it to keep running normally and notifying employees of a potential shutdown could jeopardize those deals. And that's all the news we have. That's all the news we have for that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, I think I hope these people get their money. This has happened too many times. This is why they're trying to uni- they're trying to unionize gaming labor. And this is why. And this is why unions. Are, you know, uh, I, I know I'm a corporate thinking person. Where I usually like when a corporation does something, I usually side with them. Like if Google. Uh, doesn't have a dark mode on their YouTube app. I go, well, you know, maybe they're working on it. You know, I, I, I try, I try to, I try to have a rosy side from both sides. Um, but this is, this is a really, this is a huge issue. And who know, who knows what's going to happen? But this is why they should unionize pretty much everything. Unionize working on a movie. Unionize uh, game, gaming, game designers. Unionize voice actors. Because this is this is uh, really damaging stuff, and I hope it. And I hope this doesn't put a black mark on anyone's record, you know, except for the Telltale people. <laughs> I hope it doesn't put a black mark on those game designers' records, because you know they're out of jobs, and now they gotta now they gotta fight for something. Anyway, oh, so anyway, I got Binding of Isaac on. You son of a gun. I got Binding of Isaac on, uh, I didn't catch it. Yeah, there's this gnat that just flew right from my face. I got Binding of Isaac on Nintendo Switch. I had it on PC. I have it on PC. I just don't want to sit in front of the laptop and play a video game. Uh, Binding of Isaac on Switch. It's great. It's $20 until October 1st. It's, it's, instead, it would be $40. Uh, listen, it needs to be $20 because it doesn't make sense why it's $40 on Nintendo Switch. And it's regularly $12 on, uh, what is this, Steam. Anyway, great game. I'm enjoying it. So I'm going to play that as soon as I finish this. But if you like this, you can all, hey, subscribe to the, the application. Please subscribe to the application. Uh, just type in, it's there's a bunch of podcasts called The Application, but just type in Chad White into your podcast service and it'll find the application or type in both the application and Chad White. Uh, listen to it. Tweet at WABE News so they can hire me for this podcasting job. I really want it. And that's why I keep fighting for it every single day. Uh, and you know, I've, you know, I was broken up with a month and a half ago. So <laughs> this would make a really, this would be a really good Christmas present for me. And uh, yeah, so do this. Also head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where you can see the landing page for both these podcasts, as well as news time. Uh, follow us on, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, also head to the YouTube page, youtube.com slash C plus comedy to get a video version of this podcast and to get the premiere show news time, which is an entertainment news show. I, this is like the third time I've had to describe this show uh, this week. It's an entertainment news show. That's kind of like uh, last week tonight, the daily show, uh, but focuses on one story and it's a little bit less funny and it's, mo- and it's all entertainment news. So do that. I want to rest my vocal cords because I've been talking for the past hour and a half. <laughs> Or for the past hour. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yeah, do that. This week's news time episode is about Fox Broadcasting Corporation's um, uh, how they sold everything to Disney and how they plan on turning around everything for Fox Broadcasting. So they have multicams. They want to co-own their shows instead of co-producing. They want to co-own the shows, and that's why they're doing multicams. That's why they're doing high concept dramas, one hour dramas, because it's easier. Competition shows, because it's easier to do. So check it out. All right. Thanks for listening. I love you. Uh